Tonight on The Readout. I saw this meme that was very funny um, on Instagram, I believe it was, and it said it's amazing. At first, it was the codes to the nuclear weapons. Right. Now, it's invisible classified documents. I have not specifically spoken to the president about what nuclear uh, uh, materials may or may not have been in there. I do not believe there were any in there. Haven't you now? Trump's lawyers have been denying and joking about the possibility of nuclear secrets being stashed at Trump's home. Now, new reporting indicates it's no joke, but Republicans are still defending him. Also tonight, the Buddy Act returns to the White House as President Biden welcomes Barack and Michelle Obama back for the unveiling of their official White House portraits. I want to thank Sharon Sprung for capturing everything I love about Michelle. Her grace, her intelligence, and the fact that she's fine. Ah, <laughs> uh, we missed them. But we begin tonight with Steve Bannon, the former White House chief strategist who is back in the news, usually for two reasons, such as attempting to dismantle the West or, as in this case, trouble with the law. Two years ago, Bannon was dragged off a billionaire's luxury yacht in handcuffs, charged with defrauding donors as part of a fundraising scam purportedly aimed at funding Trump's border wall that Mexico was supposed to pay for. Now, racism can be profitable at times, allowing Bannon to line his pockets with nearly a million dollars in sweet wall donations that he, of course, used to fund a lavish lifestyle instead of a wall. After Trump pardoned Bannon for milking his own supporters, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office opened its own investigation. And that's because presidential pardons, well, they only apply to federal charges and cannot prohibit state prosecutions. Bannon is now traveling to New York City to prepare to surrender in the morning to face charges in a new indictment that remains sealed. The precise details of the state case are unknown, but sources told the Washington Post that the prosecution will likely mirror the federal case. Bannon was once known as the man behind Trump, a disruptor, hell-bent on ensuring that white nationalism had a seat in the Oval Office. This is Trump's guy, now likely to join the club of Trump allies who have served time for Trump. For a group obsessed with locking her up, Trump's inner circle knows a thing or two about being behind bars or behind walls. Trump's people, well, they can go to jail, forced to face justice. So why not him? The Bannon case proves this point. I mean, it will be handled in New York State Supreme Court by Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, the same Alvin Bragg who declined to file criminal charges against Trump, leading two senior prosecutors to resign, meaning the prosecutor that's taking down Bannon is the same prosecutor who essentially let Trump off the hook. After all these years, Teflon Don still stands, even as he reportedly stashed a foreign government's nuclear secrets at his Mar-a-Lago club. That's surreal, bonkers terrifying sentence I just said is actually a real thing happening in real life. The Washington Post reported that a document the FBI seized at Trump's crib designed, described a foreign government's military defenses, including its nuclear capabilities. And some of the seized documents detailed top secret U.S. operations so closely guarded that many senior national security officials are kept in the dark about them. The recklessness is astonishing. And yet, Trump claims it's all a hoax. His attorney even mocked the allegation the same day that this news came out. Trump's litany of excuses seem almost perverse at this point, that he declassified ultra-secret national security secrets on a, a foreign nation. Nuclear secrets, with just a wave of his Trumpy magic wand. Yeah, that is not a thing. That he was transferring them to his presidential library, also a no that the documents do not even belong to the United States government. Sounded like quite the child and the dictator. It's not theirs. It's mine, 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 mine. Trump has always been a serious threat to national security of the United States. A disaster, frankly. Doing things that no one else would or could get away with. Not even his friends. Teflon Don, when will accountability actually stick to him? Joining me now, Michael Cohen, former Trump's former personal attorney and host of the Mia Culpa podcast, 
Mark Poly Polymeropoulos, MSNBC national security analyst and former CIA officer, and Paul Butler, MSNBC legal analyst and a former federal prosecutor. And I'm going to start with you, Paul, because I'm sorry, but this was the, the, the subject of our, our 11 o'clock call. We do an 11 o'clock call on the show. We are just, we talk it out for like an hour. And this is my, this was my, this was my thing that I could not get away from. How in the hell is Donald Trump so impervious to justice? This guy has not paid taxes his whole adult life, except when he worked for the same company I do, when he was on The Apprentice. He's gotten away with tax fraud, insurance fraud, defrauding the American government, enriching himself off the presidency, and now stealing government documents, including nuclear secrets. He's untouchable. Why? In this case, because of Judge Cannon. She admitted that she's treating this case differently because it involves a former president. But, Joy, as you know, in our criminal legal system, no one is supposed to be above the law. And so when the judge starts giving Trump special consideration, she basically has to make up a whole new procedure just for former presidents. And that's pretty much what she did. First, the judge blesses Donald Trump with a special master to review documents that, under the law, don't even belong to him. And then the judge orders DOJ to stop parts of its criminal investigation. That almost certainly exceeds her authority. It's just not a good look for the appearance of justice when a judge appointed by Donald Trump extends to Donald Trump benefits that no other subject of a search warrant would get, and that will almost certainly substantially delay the criminal investigation. And that no one will ever get. Let me, let me, play, let me play a witness in, in the defense of what I just said. His name is Donald J. Trump. This is what Donald J. <laughs> Trump said about the handling of classified documents and how that should be dealt with. We can have someone in the Oval Office who doesn't understand the meaning of the word confidential or classified. This was not just extreme carelessness with classified material, which is still totally disqualifying. This is calculated, deliberate, premeditated misconduct, followed by a cover-up. Mark Polymeropoulos, <laughs> these comments were about Hillary Clinton. He said the same about James Comey. He said the same about John Bolton. From a national security uh, professional standpoint, from your standpoint, how is it possible that a man can steal national security secrets of the United States and of another country, maybe an ally, maybe an enemy, take him home and not have any consequences whatsoever? So, Joyce, I, I really think, you know, we have to leave it to the to the FBI. And I think that's why, the, you know, the, the appointment of the special master is a little troubling. This is going to delay the FBI's role in this. You know, this is not like wine. It doesn't, doesn't you know, age well. You know, bad news does, get, does not get better over time. But I think the Washington Post reporting was really interesting. First and foremost, it's concerning because you have, of course, uh, information potentially about, the, you know, uh, either our adversary or an ally's nuclear program. You have things um, you know, information there about special access programs, which is really the kind of the, the crown jewels of the United States government. But, but here's why it's really important, because I think it really reinforces what the Department of Justice and the FBI did, which was to search Mar-a-Lago. And that is really, really significant when you have, you know, large majorities of the American public still questioning this. I think we can put together that, put the, you know, put to bed the notion this is a storage problem, and, and we really have to let the FBI uh, do its work. Remember, Bill Barr, former attorney general, came out over the weekend really in favor of this. And, and he was a CIA employee for the beginning of his career. He was, a, he was an attorney in, in CIA. He knows a bit about classified inf information. I think Donald Trump's in trouble. And we really need uh, you know, the FBI to, to, to jump in and, and conduct the investigation in, in really in a, in a timely manner. Is he in trouble, though? Michael Cohen, I, I, the reason I, would I, I want to talk to you today, because is he in trouble, really? Because this guy's been committing crimes basically for his entire adult life. His dad didn't pay taxes. He doesn't pay taxes. He defrauds uh, the insurance companies of New York. He defrauds the taxpayers of New York. He defrauds the United States IRS. He literally appears to be a crime machine. And no one will stop him. No one can stop him. He could literally, at this point, I believe, I think he was right, he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue in New York City, in the middle of the street, and no one would touch him. He's unbloody touchable. Please explain. You yeah, know the guy. How? Yeah, I'm not so sure I agree with that statement. Yes, he's gotten away with so much already from uh, obstruction of justice, witness tampering, tax fraud, wire fraud, bank fraud. 
misrepresentations. He's gotten away with a litany of things. However, and this makes me scratch my head, the taking of classified documents, I mean, nuclear top secret documents, should no longer be a Republican versus a Democratic issue. And I listen to all of the pundits on television, whether it's, you know, this station, CNN, Fox, I listen to them all. This is an American issue, and I don't understand what we're doing. It's not a question of whether the law is being applied equally to all. It is not. I mean, for God's sakes, the DOJ, they're tiptoeing around Donald as if he was the king, right, the supreme leader or a monarch. And again, he is not. So like what you said before, if the adage that no one is above the law holds true, then Donald should have been indicted already and facing consequences. But I'll tell you what I do think is going to happen. I think that there's going to be an indictment, and relatively soon. I believe there will also be congressional hearings um, with Donald in the hot seat where, you know, either he'll come in willingly, which, you know, I don't think he will, or via subpoena, where... I mean, the real questions that they have to be asking right now is, you know, where are the documents that were in these empty top secret files that were found at mar a -Lardo? I mean, that's really the big question. And who did Donald give them to or show them to? Because like you've also said, and I've been saying it since day number one, Joy, Donald is a clear and present danger to the national security and safety of this country. And if this doesn't prove it, I'm not sure that anything will. So I agree with you. But I don't agree with you in the fact that he's not going to be held accountable for this. This is too big at this point in time.